Matthew chapter 4. It's January, and as usual, people that when the gyms make money. Because people have all these resolutions that they start in, from January 1st by April 18th, they have thrown them away. Some are able to push through to finish. One of them is people trying to keep their bodies in shape. How I many of you love to do that, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much you pay, whether you pay $20 a month or $30 a month or $19.99 a month or $50 a month, you still are so optimistic that if you keep the discipline, you are going to finish the year uh, with six-pack, for those of you who are believing God for six-pack. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I saw somebody on my right hand side receiving the anointing for the six pack. Amen. And, and uh, so let it be so according to your faith. And uh, those who have their love ladders and want them to go away, I believe in God that it will also go. A amen. Hallelujah. Is somebody in the house? So we spend a lot of money trying to keep a physical body in shape, which is not a bad thing at all. It's actually good, you know, for you to have a very healthy body. We, we do well to eat well. The guys who want to build muscles have all these protein shakes that they drink. After they go to the gym, they come back, they drink them. They have all these kind of meats they eat, chicken breast and some lean meats and some kind of, they eat all kinds of protein so that they can build up their muscles. Are there guys in the house? Man. And they do all these kind of routines just to be able to be in health, but some also want to build physical muscles. And do you know that all the muscles they are trying to build besides health is aesthetic? It's basically just want to step out and when you wear your clothes and you stand like that, you look cool. The ladies want to step out, and when they step out, they look smashingly good. And when they take one step, you can know, oh. After they have tucked some things inside, oh. Mm. Hallelujah. But we do all of this just because one want to stay healthy physically. And then, whether you like it or not, you want to look good. I like to look good. So it is not a bad thing to look good. How many of you want to look good? So we, we do that, but the truth is that this physical body one day is going to be made away with. And then you are going to have an eternal body. So the Bible says, for this mortality shall make way for immortality. That is why when you bury a loved one, whilst you are trying going around the body and using, trying to touch and all of that, really what you are touching is dust. Because the person, the real, real person has left the body already. So if you go back years after, you will discover that the person you buried is no more. They are going to see dry bones. Now, that is why it is important, more important to build your spirit more than your body. Is somebody in the house here? Is somebody in the house here? It's important to have spiritual muscles more than physical muscles. Physical muscles are good, but spiritual muscles are, are better than physical muscles. And one of the ways to gain spiritual muscles and strength is true fasting and prayer. So my message today is entitled, is titled, Fasting Strong. When you fast, it makes you strong. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness 
to be tempted by the devil. Verse 2. When he had fasted 40 days and night, afterward he was hungry. All right? So here is Jesus. The first time we heard about Jesus after his birth was when he was 12. When his parents had brought him to the temple. And he was having exchanges with the elders. After that, we didn't hear of him anymore. The next time we shall hear about Jesus, Jesus was 30 years old. And his ministry was about to begin. And Jesus Christ, in about to begin his ministry, thought it wise to build some muscles. Because remember, his man, God. His man, God. Or God man, I should say, properly. God man. So, he has, he had the weaknesses that we have. And, and, and his life is supposed to be an example to us. Though he's a savior, his life on earth is also an example to us. So, if you really want to have a victorious Christian life, it's for you to look at Jesus and live your life like how he lived his life. So, before he began his, his, his ministry, Jesus went on to, into 40 days of fasting and 40 days of prayer. Waiting on the Lord. Lesson, lesson is this. Number one, number one, number one. Fasting is important when you are about to begin a very important venture in your life. Any new chapter in your life, you must begin with fasting and prayer. Now, we saw Jesus having a wonderful ministry. Besides Matthew chapter 4, the beginning when he fasted 40 days, we never heard again about him fasting. As a matter of fact, he was, he was criticized of being a gluten and eating with unbelievers. But I, I, I want to believe that in between, he probably was first fasting, but there was no need to record it. One thing we knew that was that he was always in prayer, though. But the lesson is this, that Jesus Christ in his ministry, he had many roadblocks. But I believe that because he was a man of fasting and prayer, and he began his ministry with fasting and prayer, he dealt with some of the challenges that would have showed up in his ministry. Why was he fasting and praying? He was basically waiting on his father to receive the oil and the grace to be able to embark on his journey and on his venture. Is someone in the house here? It is important, you know, let, let, me, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. Are you aware that people get married? And when they get married, then they are trying to bind demons in their marriage to fix a husband or to fix a wife. Baby, you got an opportunity before you entered into the marriage to go into prayer because that adventure you are going to go into, you don't know how the end is going to be, but it's for you to go on your knees and begin to pray and talk to God and tell the Lord, this is what I'm going to do, God. If I've already made that decision, what do you think about it? And if I've not made that decision, God, help me to make a good decision. You have to take a time of fasting and praying, seeking God to know his will or drawing strength from him to be able to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish in life. Can I get a witness in the house here? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he says that for God declares, for this is verse 10, he says God declares the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. Way before your mama met your daddy, believe me, God knew who you would be. Before we began 2020, God already knows how the end is going to be. He knows all things. He's all-knowing. Before you enter into a business, God knows how the end is going to be. That is why it is important for you to seek him first in fasting and prayer. The fact that you have the capital is not enough. The fact that you have a good proposal is not enough. The fact that you have drawn a plan is not enough. You must go on your knees. You have all those plans, but spread it before the Lord and go on your knees in fasting and in prayer and in calling and in asking and telling the Lord, God, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. Direct me. Lead me. If you do that and you begin the venture, he gives you the green light and you begin. What happens is this. The troubles will come. Definitely. The challenges will come. 
But before they come, you've already drawn strength. You've built your muscles. You've already received the anointing. You've already received the grace. You've already received the power. So when the troubles come, you are able to deal with the troubles. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. Now that's why in Royal House we encourage you that when the year begins, when we are embarking on our fasting, you put yourself into it and also fast. Because it's a new year. Last year is gone. It's a new year and you need fresh grace to be able to go through the year. So it was when I heard these things that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Verse 10, verse 9. Verse 9. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast down to the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling place. Go to verse, verse, verse 10. Now these are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great power. This is the I pray. Keep going for me. Oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the cup of the king's cupbearer. So here again, we see a man who is about to embark on a venture. Nehemiah was serving a foreign king as the cupbearer, as the one who brings the king's wine. It's very important that if you are in a position of authority, you have trusted people around you. So, the king has a special person that, that brings him his wine, his tea. Not everybody does that because anybody can poison, somebody can poison the king. And this is the job of Nehemiah. One day Nehemiah got a message that in his country, in Israel, the walls have been broken down. There is rubbish everywhere, there's trash everywhere. And he now conceived in his heart that he has to go back to go and help for the rebuilding of the broken walls of his nation, of the city of Jerusalem. So, before he would take the step, he exhibited something. He went into fasting. He went into prayer. One, the request is going to be a difficult one for the king to release him to go. Number two, he also wanted supplies for the building. And he's trusting God for the king to give him supplies. Number three, when he goes even into Israel to rebuild, there is the possibility that challenges will come. And indeed, when you read the book of Nehemiah, you will discover that Sambala, Tobiah, Gershom, and some people rose up against him to fight him. Why was Nehemiah successful? Number one, he began with fasting. He began with prayer. He waited on God. So when he went before the king, the king was able to release him. Then the king gave him supplies. And when he got into the land, even though there was resistance and there was opposition, he was still able to rebuild the walls because before he began, he saw the face of God. I decree over your life and I prophesy over your life. That as you wait on the Lord, may success be your portion. Oh, somebody shout, I receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. That's it. Fasting. Prayer. Fasting. Prayer. But what is fasting? Oh, fasting is when you deliberately abstain from food. And sometimes food and water. With the aim of suppressing your flesh. For your spirit to be built up fast. I, not, not, I, I do understand that some people fast. Now they are, they are introducing intermittent fasting. And the reason they do that, I hear is that after three days of not eating, um, you flush out sugar out of your system. So three days after that, what happens is that your, the, the strength that your body gets gets from fat. 
So the burning of the fat is what gives you strength to be, keep going. So the more you keep going without food, you are burning fat in your system because the strength you depend on is the fat that already exists in your system. So some people go on this fast to be able to burn fat. So for the believer, it is two blessings in one. The number one blessing is that the first blessing is that as you go on a fast, you are bringing your flesh under subjection. As you, as you go on the fast, you are building your spirit. But at the same time, you are burning fat. For us, we fast for spiritual reasons. And automatically the physical one will come. We fast for spiritual reasons. And I'm saying that whatever you start, before you start ministry, fast and pray. Before you start a business, start fast and pray. Before you enter into a relationship, fast and pray. If you are beginning a new academic year, you are a student, go in fasting and go in prayer, seeking the Lord's goodwill, seeking the Lord's presence, seeking the Lord's power, seeking the Lord's grace to be able to go with you to finish and finish well. It was hard for me to quit my secular job to now come and pastor full time. The ministry was basically young and small. I've just come to the country. Been around for maybe about just two years or so. But the young church grew very fast. And for those, those who are around will tell you, our church grew very fast. Fast in the basement, the place just got full all of a sudden. It just the church just was moving, was moving, was moving, was moving. And I felt the need. I, I could feel within me that this is the time for me to now take the step to enter into full time because when church begins to grow to a certain level, the, the, the number one staff of the church is the pastor. If you can't hire people, and the pastor can take the bigger sacrifice than anybody else. So I need to be around because I was the secretary of the church. <laughs> I was the follow-up team of the church. <laughs> I was everything. But it, I need I to be on full time to also make time for the flock, to shepherd the flock very well. You know, for counseling, for prayer, for visitations, and all of that. I need them to do that. Now, I was now thinking, I'm saying, hmm, this ministry thing, what if I go? To this full time and the check doesn't work. What shall be said of me? Say, hey, is it even the right time for me to do this? This is a small church. But I could hear the voice say that this is the time. 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 So I told the apostle general, I said, I, I feel like it's time for me to go on full time. As for him, when you say God speak, God is speaking to you, he won't say anything. He says, well, uh, my son, whatever you do. So I decided to leave my, the comfort of my home, travel to a place in Pennsylvania, in some woods somewhere. Um, it's a prayer, it's a retreat center. I don't know if the people pray, people also do other camping and stuff out there. Went into the woods, remained there for about, about seven days or so, and just praying and praying and praying and seeking God and asking for strength and asking for grace and telling God that God, what you are going to put me through, please help me that this thing will work. God, help me that I will succeed. Help me that this ministry will work. Help me, 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 help me. Prayer, 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 prayer. By the time I finished, I came with confidence. I came with optimism. I came with hope. I came with faith. And it's been about 15 years now. And see what the Lord has done. If you start well, not depending on your, your, your gifts and your talents, but depending on the grace of God and humbling yourself in fasting and in prayer and seeking God and telling God that without him, you cannot succeed in the business. Without him, you cannot succeed in the ministry. Without him, you cannot succeed. And let me tell you something. It's not the beginning of a thing that really matters. It is how you end that matters. So if you begin and you begin well with Christ, Christ will order your steps so that your ending will be well. I've seen many as sportsmen and women who started well, who were earning quarter of a million pounds, and by the time they leave, 
Some of them are broke. Some of them are broke. So it's not how you even, it's not that starting and doing well, but if you start and do well, I started with God, I'm doing well. Please, please, whatever you start, start with God. Every venture. So Apostle General, I mean, some of you don't know Apostle General, if you have been new here, you've just joined the church this year. Apostle General is the founder of Ryan House Chapel um, worldwide. He comes here, he'll be in March. So basically, like my bishop. So, he tells a story of his life. He and his wife, how they were very broke. He had just finished university. His wife had also finished and they were not finding jobs. Life was hard for them. They got married very early and, and, and they were staying in the home of, the, uh, of his, of his parents-in-law. Life was so hard every year for the about first two, three years. Very difficult. So one day, the Holy Spirit just said to him, then he wasn't a pastor of a church, the Holy Spirit now said to him that why don't you declare at the beginning of the year 21 days of fasting and prayer and commit your year into my hands and see if I will not. According to him, he said the first time he declared that fast for him and he and his, his wife to do, that was the beginning of their breakthrough. So now it became a standard for them as, as a couple every year to fast for 21 days to pray and commit their year into the hands of the Lord and the progress. So because of the, the testimonies they were receiving for themselves, when the Lord now called them into ministry full time, then they decided to introduce the concept of beginning the year with fasting and prayer for the church. And that's why we fast and pray at the beginning of the year because we don't know how the journey is going to end and we need God's help in the process. Second reason why fasting and prayer is very important for the believer, you fast and pray so that you can overcome temptations. <laughs> there are temptations in life. God will not tempt you. Satan will tempt you. <laughs> can I say that again? I said God will not tempt you. Satan will whether you like it or not, Satan will bring you temptation. And whether you, you'll be able to overcome the temptation or not depends on how you are fortified spiritually. Your spiritual muscles will determine whether you can overcome temptation or not. We live in a world where there is sin all around us. The devil can bring a temptation into your life for you to lose your position. The devil can bring a temptation into your life for you to lose your place in the life of someone who is very important to you. The devil can bring temptation into your life for you to lose your ministry. The devil can bring a temptation into your life for you to lose your career. The devil can bring a temptation into your life for you to just... <laughs> Satan is a master of that. Are you aware that Job had a very good life? Until Satan now went to God and said, this man is trusting in his riches. And so, can I begin to take his riches? Now? Because the way he can, that, that was temptation. So, some of the temptations are, uh, the devil will come and come and take something from you thinking your faith is in that thing. But when you, are, you have spiritual muscles and you have fortified yourself spiritually, your dependence is not on the physical things. So, even when the devil is taken away, you don't curse God. You don't submit to the temptation. There are people who submit to the temptation. Their commitment to God begins to go down because they are losing, suddenly they lost the marriage, they lost the job, something bad is happening to them and they don't know that it is a temptation, a trial and a temptation from the devil. So Jesus in Matthew, we read, I will see that Jesus, right up to verse 10, of time, I just go. Jesus Christ fast and pray, and Satan showed up. And let me present to you that any time by the time we finish this fasting and prayer, Satan is going to show up. Oh, he's going to show up to check whether your the anger has gone. Satan will show up. 
You, you show up to check whether your so-called fasting and prayer, you are praying, 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 whether the spirit of unforgiveness, you have released it and let it go. So God will allow him to come and check. So Jesus fast and pray 40 days, 40 nights. He has finished praying. The guy is fortified. He's about to begin his ministry and get the first person who showed up, Satan. And the first temptation is that if you believe you are the son of God. The Bible says that Jesus was hungry. Very hungry. So if you believe you are the son of God, then please, <laughs> Jesus, quickly. <laughs> Turn stones into bread and eat. Can you imagine you are the one Satan was talking to? After you have prayed and you have anointed and he comes to tell you to turn. But Jesus knew that this guy has been sent to come and play around and to mess me up. So Jesus now spoke the word of God and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by any word that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. And when Satan tempts you one, he he will go and rest small and he will come back again. Hey, hey, my sister, if Satan tempts you with a man who brings $5,000 and you say no, he will come again with 15000 If you say no, he will come again with 100000 We shall find out whether the week of the altar work or didn't work. For some people, when a temptation is coming, this is the prayer they pray. Father, I thank you that you've made it very short for me. I, Father, thank you very much that you have made life. The thing is very short for me now. I'm asking for forgiveness in advance. Because I know that it's against your word. But, um, Lord, all things work together for good. Miss Cote scriptures. And for his mercy shall end your mercy, Lord, mercy. I'm asking for forgiveness before I sin, Lord. Yes, Jesus. So, <laughs> here we have Jesus. The devil goes and comes back again. And text him. Hi. And he says, fall down. And the devil now begins to come with scripture. He says, fall down. Drop. Drop from this mountain top. When you drop, the Bible says in Psalm 91 that the Lord himself, he will cause his angels to catch you and the foot of the righteous shall not be dashed to a stone. So God, but Jesus knew this was temptation. The amount of temptation. Then Jesus, Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Hey, did I tell you the story of the, of the gentleman who didn't know the Bible, doesn't fast and pray, doesn't wait on God, was faced with temptation. There he is in his room, the temptation is facing him. So he picked his Bible and he opened the scriptures. And when he opened, it says, For thou, whatever thou wishes to do, do it quickly. <laughs> he closed and he opened again. For the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? He said, the Lord has confirmed. <laughs> when you are not, <laughs> you don't fortify yourself with fasting and prayer. Of course, fasting, prayer, and the word, what temptations can you fall? A certain woman, they don't have money at home. She likes shopping. So the husband had a very lengthy meeting with the lady. I said, look, this new year we are entering into. I don't want you to be wasting money. This is our budget. I've given you some every month for your personal shopping, whatever. So let's keep it like that. 
Then the man checks the account and sees that some money has moved. <laughs> has moved. So we don't know where it went. And then, did he say anything? Nice gentleman. Two weeks after they were going for a party, and the lady was looking very beautiful and good. Nicely dressed. And I look at the lady, but I've not seen this dress before. <laughs> I, um, I bought it two weeks ago. The man said, I know, because money left the account. And the, and the man said, but why did you do that? I said, the devil made me do it. And he said, how did the devil make you do it? He said, when I wore the dress and I stood before the mirror, the devil told me you look so good. <laughs> so I said to the devil, get it behind me. So the devil went behind me. When he went behind me, he said, your back also looks very, very fine. When you, when you fast and pray, there are certain habits that will break. Because the strength you have drawn from the Lord, when the voice of the devil is coming, you can fight it. I read a testimony of, um, of a gentleman who says he has had a problem with drinking. And has always justified the problem of, he's a Christian, he has always justified the problem of drinking with, with going to the scriptures and picking scriptures that not, that not necessarily condemn drinking. Like for instance, for the sake of your stomach, a little bit of alcohol is good for you. Like, like for instance, um, don't, don't be filled with wine in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like for instance, John chapter 2, Jesus Christ turned water into wine and, and, and all of that. But he also knew that in a day he could drink, drink and drink and almost drink his head off. It was worrying him, so he decided that this is a matter he cannot handle. So he decided to go into fasting for three and a half days, just praying and, and prostrating before the Lord and telling the Lord, if, if he doesn't help, this thing will kill him. He prayed and prayed and prayed, and he said after the three days of the fasting, when he finished, he even told himself that, okay, now that I'm not going to be drinking that hard liquor again, at least let me be drinking my wine. He says he will pick the wine bottle. Something will say, just drop it. He drops it. He drops it. And that's how he overcame alcoholism. <laughs> you can overcome temptation by fasting and by prayer. Finally, fasting and prayer moves mountains. Matthew chapter 17, from verse 19 through verse 21. Are you being blessed here this morning? Yes. Verse 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a master seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to, to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this Kind does not go except by fasting and prayer. So here we are, Jesus Christ was away from his disciples and a man brings a son, a child who was epileptic. And when the convulsion starts or the epilepsy starts, this guy can sometimes fall into fire. And if there's a pool over there, he will fall into the pool, almost drowning. So this man brings his son to Jesus. But Jesus was not around, so the disciples were those who were around. So the disciples now decided to cast out the devil of epilepsy. And when they cast out, the more they cast out, the more the guy was getting epileptic. So the father got worried. Then Jesus showed up. When Jesus showed up, then the father went to Jesus and said, Master, I brought my son to your man, but the man couldn't deal with it. So Jesus Christ now rebuked the spirit of epilepsy and then healed the boy of epilepsy. Everybody rejoiced and everybody left. Then the disciples came. So, master, 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 what happened here now? Master, master, we've been trying this. Master, is there something you haven't told us? Master, master. So he began by first rebuking them of unbelief. That they have faith. They don't have faith. He said if you have faith, like a master seed is tiny, tiny, tiny. You, you, are, you are a chef, so you know. Very tiny, tiny, tiny seed. He said if you have faith like a master seed, if you tell a mountain to move, it will move. 
So the problem with you not being able to heal this boy is because you don't have faith. But in the same context, he moves on and he says, how be it, this one, this mountain, this mountain, this mountain, this mountain. Remember, we are talking about epilepsy, we are talking about healing. Then Jesus begins to talk about, describe the situation like a mountain. And then he moves it and says that this particular mountain of casting out devils like this one, they only move by fasting and by prayer. So there are certain things that prayer alone might not be able to do it. And if prayer alone is unable to do it, then you must now go to the next level of fasting and prayer. So this does not go except by fasting and prayer. There are certain mountains that only respond to fasting and prayer. Now let's con co connect fasting and prayer to your faith. Let's, let's connect it here now. Now watch this. Jesus says, this mountain of epilepsy cannot go except by fasting and prayer. Before he rebuked them and said, you don't have faith if you had faith like the master seed. Here we are. Anytime you fast, anytime you fast, and you are fasting and seeking God, you are bringing the flesh to subjection. Now, those who work in faith, they, do, they are not moved by sight. They are moved by the spiritual eye. Faith only, faith, anybody who works in faith is moving in the spirit. For you to move in the spirit is for you to be able to keep your flesh under control. It is your spirit that communicates with the spirit of God. And if there's too much junk around your, your spirit through the flesh, you are unable to exercise your faith. So for you to be able to exercise your faith well, you must be detoxed spiritually so that the, 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 the impediments will be removed from your system. And when you are in fasting and prayer, what fasting and prayer does is that it keeps you away from the things of the world. When you are in fasting and prayer, you don't want to argue. When you are in fasting and prayer, you don't want to fight. When you are in fasting and prayer and somebody steps on your toe, you say, thank God I'm fasting and praying. <laughs> Thank God I'm fasting and praying. If not for this fasting and prayer. <laughs> so when you are in fasting and prayer, it's like you, you have some consciousness of your spirituality. You are so conscious of your spirituality in that you do not want to do anything that God doesn't like. So you do things right. And in acting that way, you're actually living the way you ought to live. All the, that, that's how you're supposed to live. But the fasting and prayer is like now puts you on track for you to live properly the way you ought to live. And in doing so, what happens is that your spirit is now elevated. And when your spirit is elevated and your flesh does not control your spirit, but your spirit controls your flesh, what happens is that you are able to exercise your faith. If you want to move mountains, the fasting and prayer is not what moves the mountain. The fasting and prayer is what empowers you to be able to take steps. The fasting and prayer is what, it's what, what, what makes your spirit alive for you to connect to the spirit of God and understand God and hear God and respond to the things that God wants you to do and how he wants you to do. That's what makes you find the results because your spirit is alert. The Bible says, if the axe head, at least the axe is 10 verse 10, the first line. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. I'll just stop there. The context is wisdom, but I want to connect it to fasting. If <laughs> the axe head is dull. It's like if your lumberjack is dull, it is difficult for you to cut down the tree. There are two lumberjack jack operators, those who cut trees. You know the little saw they hold. <laughs> young guy and an older guy. The young guy, they were cutting trees. 
The young guy started with strength. Pick up his lumberjack. And he was just going. The older guy will cut and then he will sit down. He will cut and then he will sit down for a while. The younger guy didn't know what the older guy was doing, sitting down. By the time they finish, the older guy has cut more trees than the younger guy. So the younger guy can say, how come you cut more trees than I did? He said, anytime you saw me sitting down, I am sharpening my blade. But you kept going when your blade was still dull. So you were using more strength to cut. And it took you a longer time to cut. Once my blade is sharp, I cut faster. You are not taking notice. That is what happens to us and happens to our spirit. When we wait on the Lord in fasting and in prayer, we become sharper. We don't have to put in too much gymnastics. When we speak, things happen. When we cast out, it gets out. When we pull down, it comes down. When we build, it is built. Why? Because our blade is sharp. So no mountain is able to hold us down. Fasting, prayer, are spiritual disciplines. And every believer must make it something that they want to embark on from time to time as the Holy Spirit leads you. There are some times that you are down, you are broken. It's a good time to fast. It's a good time. You feel depressed, it's a good time to fast and just talk to God. By the time you finish, you have drawn strength. In the most difficult moments in your life, just fast and pray. You are going to start a venture, just start and pray. When you feel like fasting and praying, fast and pray and wait on the Lord. If you fast and pray and you embark on a venture, God's grace will see you through it. If you fast and you pray, temptations will come, but when they come, they will not swallow you. You will overcome them. If you fast and pray, no mountain will be able to stand before you where you cannot bring them down. May the Lord keep you. The Lord honor you. The Lord favor you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. God bless you. I love you.